Hello, hello, welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration and Crestorio 2 for part two of this week's update video. Yesterday we took a look at the puzzles and the uh, Stargate and all those sort of things and see it to see how those are going. And so today we're going to take a bit more of a look at how some of the how production is going around the factory and what's going on with these quantum processors and that sort of thing in general. Yesterday, we talked about how it was a bit of a struggle to get enough astro science coming in, and well, it seems to be working, it's mostly now, we've got plenty of astro, however, we seem to have run out of deep space, so I guess we'll have to come back to that. But the first thing I wanted to talk about was the uh, the energy science, and that's actually working quite nicely at the moment, over here it's being made, but up until quite recently, we had a major shortage of these uh, quantum processors coming through here, um, and in fact, we still do have a, a little bit of a shortage, as you can see, the train has emptied completely, and there's, well, the, the, the warehouses are empty, so we'll, uh, we'll be wanting to this one off again to go and get some more fairly soon. But it's still unloading the Holmium cables and the Holmium solenoids as well. Oh, there we go, it's emptied now. So now it's probably about ready to leave. Anyway, so yes, we had a massive shortage of quantum processors. And so I traced the problem back over here to the energy science area where we were making the quantum processors. And it turned out we had a massive shortage of the uh, of the, of the, um, of the cables, the Holmium cables over here. And so we, we just weren't able to bring enough up. So the train would arrive, the mixed train that comes up from the ground would arrive. It would have a load of Holmium cables and some plastic and some rare metal and all of the other stuff that goes in here. Yeah. And it would drop it all off, it would go rattle through the uh, warehouses over here, and then by the time the train left, we'd already run out of cables again. And so, that wasn't working well enough, so it was time for an upgrade. To achieve that, and you'll be starting to see a little bit of a pattern going on here, I put in an additional train over here with its, with its own extra station, and this one is bringing up the Holmium cables from the ground up to orbit in massive quantities. So it is a train that is dedicated entirely to the Holmium cables, and bringing them up for the science area. Now, okay, we don't have quite enough being dropped off here for it to keep up, but, in, but this has helped massively. We've now, as you can see, got quite a lot of Holmium cables available over here. There's still 6,000 waiting in this in this warehouse, so things are looking pretty good from this point of view. But, but it still wasn't enough, and so here I've upgraded the belt, and so because we still don't have any deep space loaders, I'm using no two normal uh, space loaders onto a pair of belts here. There's a little bit of spaghetti to bring it over here, and then a deep space space splitter, and then a deep space transport belt running all the way down here, down to the area where we're making the quantum processors and feeding quite a lot more in, and yeah, that's, that's worked quite well. It, it, uh, it, it seems to have kind of stopped now, but it was it was working quite well. That helped a lot. I did make a little bit of a mistake when I was setting this up and forgot to rename this station up here when I copy and paste it in. So we ended up getting a, a rare metal train arriving here and unloading quite a lot of rare metals down into this warehouse, which is why there's this additional belt down here to, rem to, to remove them and pass them through. And then a control down here to only allow these belts to run once this one has finished emptying. So now we fixed that. We can now get rid of all of the uh, the belts up here like uh, like this. We don't need any of that anymore. It can just flow through there. And I suppose that also means we don't need the um, any, any sort of enable disable on these belts down here either. Uh, and can just, we can we can remove all of this stuff and tidy it up and so that's it was fortunately it was relatively easy to fix that problem after I after I made it uh, and things are now running exactly as they should and we've only got well I was going to say we've only got Holmium cables in this warehouse we haven't even got Holmium cables but at least there's no rare metals left in there. And as I say, this helped quite a bit, but then the next problem was that we ran out of the uh, Holmium plates, because to make one of these quantum processors, you require 30, okay, it's 32 Holmium cables, which is a lot, but also 32 Holmium plates. And so we needed to upgrade the amount of Holmium that was being brought down here. And so previously, Way up at the top of this belt, we had um, a machine here that was taking in the Holmium ingots that were being brought up from the ground. You can see here, here the belt brings them over here, and turning them into Holmium plates, which is then passing back down into the um, into, into the warehouse here, in order to and then to be passed over to here to go down. No, not to go down here. To be to then go down this belt here, which was taking Holmium plates down. I've upgraded that now, so instead of taking plates, it's now taking the ingots, uh, so in, in their raw form, and they're being fed down here, which meant that, well, there were a few places where we were make, where we were still using Holmium plates. So here, for example, we use Holmium plates in order to make the, the Harry Potter data, I, I don't know, whatever it is. Uh, and so I put in this little cunning little system down here, which will take in ingots from this side of the belt, if they exist, and then output the uh, plates out here if there's room to. Um, but it'll also filter out the ingots here. So this means that at the moment, while we're still getting through the old supply of plates, they can just run straight through and they'll carry on supplying these machines as they did before. But as soon as that runs out and we start passing ingots through here instead, then this this inserter here will grab the ingots off the uh, off the belt, turn them into they'll be turned into plates here, and then put back on by this inserter. And so this will mean that without having to come back and make any tweaks to this, the system will carry on working. As an added bonus, when we do actually start to run out, and when we start to use up all these plates here, 
here, we're going to be in a slightly weird position because because of the way these belts load. If we have ingots coming down here, the ingots will go round on the inside first because you always pull off the off the inside of the belt or the the left hand side as it is coming round here because it goes onto this belt first. And this this side, the outer side, will only get used when the inner side runs out. So that means if we if this starts to pull when there are ingots available, we'll end up with ingots on one side of the belt and plates on the outside, and we'll only pull the plates through when we when we're using plates over here, but not produce not but not bringing any ingots down. So it could so the extra ones on here could get pulled through at any time. So having this little system here to catch them and uh, allow them to be passed straight through makes a lot of sense and will mean that we won't ever end up in an awkward sticky position where some where some ingots end up down here. Or or some plates end up trying to go into this machine, both of which would cause the whole system to jam up. So I'm quite pleased with that. It's a very, very simple thing, but it will just work and it'll work quite neatly. So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm happy with it. It has occurred to me that it could possibly jam up if some ingots manage to get through and go into this uh, splitter here and, and block up the bottom row of it, and then some more plates come along. So it actually, might, it might not be 100% um, idiot proof, but it's it's not too bad, should we say. Maybe if I put this, um, this splitter on the opposite side, so coming down here, flipped around the other way, then then I'd have been able to have the ex the inserter pulling off the splitter and we probably wouldn't have had that problem. But then I think you pull off the other side of a splitter with it. I think an inserter will always pull out on the from the output side of a splitter. So that wouldn't I don't think that would have worked. Hmm. A tricky one. I'm not sure what the best way to have, uh, to organise this would be, but this will probably work as long as we either use up all these Holmium plates when there's no ingots there as, there as there is now, or if we always have a good supply of ingots whenever we're using Holmium plates. So it'll probably be okay, but there's a chance it might not be. We shall have to wait and see. Similarly, further down, I've done exactly the same thing for the uh, processor pr production area. We've got the same sort of wiggly thing here, with and, and then down here we've got this. Is, this one's actually slightly safer because we don't have to worry about the um, because we don't we only have one thing on the belt, so we don't have to worry about the uh, the green circuits as well. So they're just being pulled down, going into a uh, an assembly machine down here, and then being fed back up. Now this actually isn't going to work because this isn't remotely fast enough to keep up with all of these machines. So instead, I've now got the the belt. The ingots are also being taken out of this way over to here, but on this top belt, where they will then be up by this manufactory which runs at like six times the speed of an assembly machine I think and then spits them all back out along here so they can then be fed just straight through along here so actually also this bit down here can be got rid of all of this is uh, unnecessary and these should just be replaced with belts like that and so the hope is that with this down here, with this running, we should now have enough Holmium coming through. However, we do seem to run into an issue where we've we've run out of Holmium ingots. I suspect that's just because we have a shortage of Holmium because we just, well, we just straight up don't have enough of it at the moment. So the train isn't able to bring up any Holmium ingots to here, and therefore the system is just going, well, we've got nothing to work with, so it, it's stalled. However, while we did have some Holmium ingots, it worked gloriously, and we produced quite a lot of uh, quantum processors, which is why the science area is now looking pretty healthy for the uh, for the the Energy 4 catalogues. As I've been saying, we have a huge shortage of Holmium at the moment. It's, uh, it's, been, it's been a problem for a while now, and Tristan has been working on improving it. And he's now got to the stage where not only has he made a design in the, um, in the Blueprint Editor, he's also been able to mostly implement it. So here, out here on Njord, we now have advanced chemical plants doing all of the uh, all of the churning through of the um, of the of the, Holmi of the crushed Holmonite to turn it into the Holmium powder and all of the sort of the byproducts that come in and out from it. And Tristan said, interestingly, now that he's using the bigger machines, it's been much, much easier to, to hook all of this stuff up because it's gone from having, um, being using the very, very small chemical plants where he was struggling to squeeze all of these belts and inputs and outputs around it onto a much, much larger machine, which can now cope much better. There's now room to have all of the inputs and outputs that are required. So he's not having to do quite so much sort of weird fiddly stuff with it in order to in order to feed everything through. Notably here, he's, he's done the trick of using inserters to put in the the new the supply of fresh stuff. So along here, the crushed holmonite and the uh, the blue beads are being put in put in by inserters on this side. And then they're being taken out by loaders over here, passed through in the appropriate direction. And then the ones that are being recycled are just being chucked straight back in by a loader. And this is important and relevant and useful because inserters will fill a machine up to having enough to run three times, whereas loaders will fill a machine up to having a stack or two's worth of the input in them. And so that means that the insert the uh, the loaders effectively have a higher priority than the inserters do. And so we're able to always load in the stuff that's being re uh, being recycled has come out and is being put back in again, whereas these ones will only run when there's a bit of a shortage. So you can see down here. 
the crushed Holmanite is flowing in quite happily along here on this belt all the time. But these inserters are only running occasionally when we start to use a bit of it up. And so that works really, really nicely. We're getting a good throughput there. And because he's now upgraded to the big chemical plants, he's got room for more uh, modules and then we can use better modules. He can also He's also put in the big wide area beacons and do, with decent numbers of high tier modules in there. This took quite a lot of waiting in order to make sure he got enough of the uh, productivity modules. I think he uh, then eventually stole some from uh, Mark's spaceship because Mark wasn't using them. But this has meant we're now getting a massive increase over here. So these machines are running at uh, almost four times their normal speed and their normal speed is about ten times the, uh, the, the speed of the old fashioned machines anyway. There aren't, sadly, there aren't improved crushing machines available, so he's still got an enormous quantity of pulverizers down here. Now, this could take some upgrade as well. So down here, you'll see that we're still on the tier three modules here. We're still on the small beacons over here, the basic beacons. So if he upgraded these to be to have higher tier modules and put in wide area beacons in, then he'd need a lot fewer of the uh, of the crusher machines along here, um, and it would, and then he'd be able to use fewer modules in total as well. So I think the next upgrade for this is probably going to be to take some of these wide area beacons and probably put them in down this gap down the middle here instead of instead of having these beacons, then fill them up with tier six modules uh, and then put tier six modules in these machines as well. Then he's going to get more output from fewer machines and it'll just and it'll run a bit more nicely and he won't have this crazy, crazy, crazy number of uh, pulverizers all the way down here because that is, um, it's a little bit excessive, isn't it? The next stage after the uh, powdering is to bring it all up here where he's now using the, the more advanced furnaces and again these are bigger and faster and that means you, and, and they take lots of modules and that means you don't need as many products. If the machine is faster whether it's due to it being inherently a faster machine or because you then put a massive beacon covering it you then don't need as many modules as I've, as I've discussed before. So it's actually cheaper to use the more advanced machines because you don't have to spend an absolute fortune on the modules and so that's now covering all of these machines. We can then uh, liquidize it quite nicely and then turn it into ingots along here and we've got a steady flow of ingots coming out and there's another bank of machines up here to doing exactly the same for the for the other half of the belts down here so this should mean that now lots more is coming through now Tristan has said that um, he's low on hydrogen chloride at the moment because that's still waiting to be upgraded. It's as, this is as far as he's got. So I think that's to uh, to ward me off from going on going in and looking at these machines and going, oh look, this this pipe over here is empty because well it is empty, but you know that's acknowledged. We, it's it's a work in progress. He he still needs to do a bit more work on the hydrogen chloride production because that's still being produced up here by. I mean it's on advanced chemical plants already and he's got big beacons along here. Maybe he's just going to need more of it or maybe better better modules in here as well. So there are ways to improve it but at the moment it's um yeah it's still it's still insufficient needs a bit more upgrading however this should help us get the holmium flowing a bit more nicely let's have a look at the production graph and and, and see if that's true so over the last 10 hours, well about 3 hours ago, there was a bit of an increase from about 370, 380 to about 400 and 410. So yeah, there's been a bit of an improvement, but I think once he gets that hydrogen chloride finished off, hopefully this will go quite a bit higher because may maybe, in fact, maybe that's what this spike was. This was using up the buffer of the hydrogen chloride and then it dropped back down again once that was all used up. So hopefully, yeah, we do need, we need a lot more holmium as you've seen. So hopefully once he's finished over here, finished with the hydrogen chloride, that will drag the amount being produced up far enough that then the system can keep up. As you can see down here, the amount produced and the amount used, well, the, this number is slightly bigger. However, I think it, as having seen the lack of it over in, the, in Norbit, I think this is just to exactly when the trains went. These numbers are close enough that I suspect we've still got we've still got problems. We're not filling up the buffers yet, but the uh, the upgrades are nearly complete over here. Putting in all of this high tier, all these high tier modules and higher and more advanced production machines and so on is of course very very power hungry. So Tristan has also extended the uh, the solar field up in New orbit in order to compensate for that and to try and produce a bit more power. And if we look at this, yes, he's currently absolutely fine. He's using four and a half out of seven. That looks pretty good to me. I think he's going to be okay with a bit more of an expansion. But it definitely needed this up here to get enough power to run everything that he's trying to run at the moment. Back over in Norbit, I said I'd take a look at the, um, the the deep space science in a moment or two. And yeah, as you can see, we've got plenty of, we've, interestingly, we've got plenty of the threes and the fours and none of the ones and the twos. And I think that's because all the researchers we've been doing have been using deep space science one and deep space science two. And so we've been getting through quite a bit of that, but we haven't been doing very much that uses the more advanced science pack. So this one we haven't quite got onto yet, but that will start using the threes. But in general, we've got, we've been getting through the ones and the twos. And if we follow this back up here, we'll be able to find out what the problem with that is. Up here, and if we follow it to up here, we can see, we can take a look and we can see that we're short of, oh, we're short of deep space science packs. Um, and that, of deep space science pack ones, and that's because over here, we're short of naquium plates, and that's because we're short of naquium ingots. So, as 
As predicted, as, as feared in the previous episodes, we currently have a bit of a shortage of um, of Naquium coming in, so we're going to need to do something about that. And when, as, as that's, run, that's run out and that stopped everything going, but if it had kept going, we'd then start to run out of cubes because those are made out of Naquium as well. And then we start to have problems with the Tesseracts and the processors because all of this requires large quantities of Naquium to keep everything going. And so that's going to just make everything Deep Space Science related just drag to a halt because we'll, well, we're going to run out of everything we need for it. We can have a look over in the spaceport and see how and, and see. But I mean, if we look down here, we'll just see that there is a ship here with um, with no Naquium in it, won't we? So, so here we go. Tell us Naquium. We've got plenty of Naquium crystals, but yeah, basically no Naquium ingots. The ship is off, presumably somewhere over by Talos. Yes, here it is, parked in Talos orbit, and it is okay. It's mostly full, so maybe another tr when, when another train comes up, then we'll have enough stuff for it to leave and take it take um this all whole sort of ten thousand Naquium over to um over to Norbit, where it'll get eaten up very very quickly because we have a voracious appetite for the stuff over there. Down on the ground on Talos, it looks like things are working. We have a steady trickle of Naquium ingots coming out here to go into the train, so um that's good. However, and all of the all of the inputs are running, everything is fine. We have we have a uh, we're running, actually, I was going to say we're running a little bit short of the um, of the crushed here, but no, that's fine. It's just because the train's gone off to go and get some more. The the, uh, the warehouse here is completely full. It's flowing merrily through here. This is running nicely. The problem is that this this system down here it's spec to produce. Naquium at the rate that can be produced from one purple belt of input because that's what we've got going in at the other end of the system So we've got we've got that going in here. It's just it's not enough It's not enough. I could put in more processing here But then we'd very very quickly start to run out of crush Naquium back up in orbit You can see that okay. Yes right now We have a spaceship here with plenty in it That's all being unloaded and going in going into the train over here So in a moment the train will take a load more down and in orbit around um, around Talos, we have Stardust and the Order of the Asteroid, and also Stardust Enterprise, both sitting there waiting to park. So actually, there's a lot of um, crushed Naquatite available in orbit around Talos at the moment, which is a little bit weird, because it should be getting used up here as fast as it's being produced over at the other end. Over in Stardust, well, we have another couple of ships on their way out, back, back from Stardust, and another three on their way out there. Over in Stardust, we are producing it at a at a rate. We've got this warehouse, these warehouses are nearly full, so when the next ship arrives, we'll be able to load it straight up. But as I've been saying, these these four belts coming in here, they're all half full. So we've got, effectively, we've got two space belts going in here, which is the same as one purple belt coming out at the other end. So I don't want to increase the amount of um, Naquium processing we've got over on Talos without increasing the amount that we're producing over here. And that's not going to be particularly possible because, well, we've just got, this is just the rate that it comes in at. So I think the next thing to do is going to be to produce another Naquium outpost or a Naquatite outpost. Probably go out to another asteroid field somewhere and set up another mining operation out there. And my cunning, cunning plan is to use an Arcolink storage chest because I've never used one of those. And those are the chests that can teleport things from anywhere to anywhere else. So if we go in and we, if we, if we drop a, um, an Arcolink chest in somewhere in the middle of an asteroid field and then just have lots of trains bringing in uh, Naquatite, probably not even even crushed Naquatite, we can then just dump that straight into the Arcolink chest, it'll appear on Talos, and then we can do all the processing over there. Now the other thing that needs to be considered with that is that we will need to bring out sulphur and iron in order to keep the uh, the acid supplies available, and possibly ice as well. So we'll need to ship all of those out to the asteroid field, but we can do that the other way through the same Arcolink chest as well. So we could have seven deep space belts of uh, Naquatite going in potentially, and then one deep space belt, or even one just normal belt, of um, sulphur and iron and ice going through as, as and when required, just sending the, the correct amount through to keep everything balanced. And that should all work quite nicely. Um, there's going to be a little bit of thought required about that and there's going to be also an enormous amount of needing to set up railway systems like this because in the asteroid fields the Naquium patches tend to be fairly remote. However, I think this should work and it should allow me to get another another enormous quantity of Naquium flowing quite reliably, quite quickly and quite e relatively easily. And then I'll be able to set up another uh, Naquium processing facility, maybe over here, so we can use all the same inputs from here, um, and just have that running from off the same system and producing even more Naquium to ship it through here. And because at the moment we've got what we've got, let's 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 do the maths on this. We've got one purple belt coming through um, of the crushed stuff. And so if we had seven of the non-crushed coming through, because then that would allow me to productivity mo uh, module the crushers, then we'd be able to have, it would be almost twice as much extra. So we'd have almost three times as much coming through. And if we got desperate, we could either put in another Arcolink storage, 
or we could put in crushers in the other asteroid field and do the crushing on site there, in which case this would allow us to multiply the amount coming through at the moment by 8 instead of by 3, and that's quite a big jump. Either way, it's going to require an enormous number of mines and an enormous amount of pulling naquitites uh, out, um, out of the asteroids, so there's going to be a big expansion required there. Uh, maybe I should ask other people to come out and help me build it, maybe not. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. But at the moment, this system is working, it's just insufficient because naquium is um, difficult. Yes, yes, difficult, that's a good word. One of the main reasons I've never used Arcalink storage in the past, well, there's, there's two main reasons. One is that you get it so late game that unless you suddenly realise you need a lot more Naquium than you realised, uh, you don't really need it at that point because you'll already have set up your interstellar transport system and it's quite easy to just copy more and more and more spaceships in. However, we've now got to the point where the supply rate isn't going to be fast enough no matter how fast we, how many spaceships we have. The other reason is that it's rather expensive in, uh, in Arcospheres. So it takes 10 Arcospheres in order to make one Arcalink storage and you need two one at each end of the uh, one at each end of the link and when you only have maybe 100 150 arcospheres taking 20 of those away is a fairly big deal and so in order to allow me to do this i think it's going to, we're going to have to um, ask mike to go out and find more and more and more arcospheres and he's been trying to do that a bit the problem is that due to some of the shortages he's not been able to actually make the probe things the arcosphere collectors because arcosphere collectors require a fair amount of slightly fancy stuff. So as you can see here, it takes Naquium cubes, so we need to have Naquium. But okay, we have a, we have enough Naquium and we have quite a lot of cubes up here in this warehouse. We've got, okay, we've got 99 plus whatever's on the belt and these take 10 each. So we can make certainly make 10, maybe 15 um, Arcosphere collectors out of just what we've got available over here without needing to worry too much about the Naquium. But also it takes quantum processors. And as I was saying, there's a massive shortage of quantum processors. Now that seems to be okay now. We've actually got 16 of them in the machine. We've got a full belt here. So that problem is solved. But we also seem to run out of dynamic emitters. And I think they get brought up on a train. So I don't know why we've run out of those. That's going to be something we'll have to have a look into. And I'm looking around here, I can't see how he's been getting them in. So maybe they've been coming in by bot. Yes, here we go. They've been coming in through the logistics network, uh, brought over by um, by uh, logistics bot. And it seems like we've run out of those in the logistics network. So we're going to need to find where those are being put in and why we've run out. Um, and I have absolutely no idea where that's going to be. I'm pretty sure they're being brought up by a train for something. Is it over here? I think they're being brought up from the ground, but then maybe they're just not being put into the um, into the logistics system, and that's why it's run out. So he's been relying on ones that have been dumped in from goodness knows where. Um, but I don't know where they come from, so that's going to be something to look for. Of course, we have the factory search for this, so we can see that over... Um over here, we have an electromagnetic. We have lots of electromagnetic facilities that are making the uh, dynamic emitters. Oh, but they've all stopped because they've run. Oh, they've run out of quantum processors. Right. So it is quantum processors all the way down. Um, but what? So what? Now that we've got a decent number of those being made, except we haven't because we haven't got any holmium. But Tristan has now fixed the holmium mostly. So once that starts flowing, hopefully then we'll be able to get the arcosphere collectors, and Mike will be able to go off and get more arcospheres. So I don't feel guilty about stealing twenty of them to make arcolink storages in order to then go off and get even more Naquium. So yes, there's quite a few stages here that we need to go through in order to get this up and running properly, but most of it seems to hinge on the uh, on the quantum processors, which are mostly fixed, but we're, uh, yeah, getting there. Mike did also say that we're out of solid rocket fuel, which is probably required to make these probe rockets. Yes, there we go. But we seem to have, well, there's 144 in there, yeah, now we now, yes, we have a good supply again. So that has been fixed. I think that suffered when we moved big oil. I think we stopped making solid rocket fuel because we didn't realise we needed it. Or maybe we stopped making it when we, and um, accidentally stopped making it when we should have carried on. I'm not sure, but it's clearly been, it looks like it's been fixed now because we have a nice healthy supply of it here and we can, we can now make the probe rockets once again. So it seems like that's probably fixed. We also did a bit of, you know, tidying up of stuff and little bits of sort of administration around the uh, around the factory to, to bring things into a slightly more sensible uh, state. So you remember that previously I talked about how we had a station over here that where we dropped off rare metals and they were being put in because we needed a larger supply of them for, I think it was a train that takes stuff away to go to all the spaceships. Uh, and then I thought, well, actually, this is bad. The train doesn't have the throughput for it. So I put in a dedicated rare metals train over here that drops off the rare metals and then a, ded a dedicated train here to take them up to up to space. And that solved the problem. The train isn't here, you can say it looks like it's working. Great. So that meant we had a dedicated rare metal drop station over here that was, to be honest, completely unnecessary. So I've deprogrammed it. I've said it's now an unused station and I've disconnected the belts down here, but I've left the infrastructure in here. So in the future, if we need another dedicated drop off station for something else, we can just use this one rather than having to build a new one. So it could be potentially quite useful. Tristan and I did a bit of further buff buffing of the. Um, 
of the advanced solar panel production. So, as I say, we've been getting through loads and loads of these to make the more, even more advanced solar panels up in Norbit. So the idea is you make the basic solar panels, then you make the advanced solar panels, then you make the flat solar panels, then you make the uh, flat holmium solar panels out of the out of those ones. So it's one of those telescopic recipes where you need to make the first type, to make the second type, to make the third type, to make the fourth type, then to make the fifth type if we had enough naquium to, to be messing around with flat solar panel threes. So you have to make all of, all of them in order to make the later ones. And so this system down here, it couldn't keep up for various reasons reasons. Initially it was um, that we didn't have enough nitric acid being pushed through and this was due to the uh, the changes that have been made to the um, the mod uh, fairly recently. Uh, this is another place where we were suffering from that. So this worked fairly well before but then after the recipe changes we weren't getting remotely enough hydrogen out of these um, electrolysis plants in order to produce the ammonia to produce the nitric acid. So we've now, well I say we, Tristan has now put in some more machines around here to, and, and make sure this is all balanced, speed modules, all of that sort of stuff. Maybe it's this beacon over here that's done most of it. Who, who knows? It, but it's all, all been done fairly nicely and uh, he's also linked up all the pipes along here so we now have one pipe that is bringing all of the nitric acid through uh, from all of the machines so that's working really well as you can see over here we have loads and loads of acid the other part of that though was that we needed a large quantity of glass to make the solar panels so this belt here needed to be upgraded so I came along I've I've upgraded to it so we've got a um, we've now got a green belt running along here uh, with a green splitter and then but we only need a blue belt feeding it in because we're only sending half a belt along here and okay and a little bit more to come over here but basically it's just this one half belt going up here to make the uh, make the solar panels and that's working really quite nicely however I now notice that we're a little bit short of, um, of, of green circuits along here so clearly this this belt along here needs to be upgraded to a blue one. You can tell how long ago it was that we built this because we built it out of red belts and we just don't do that anymore because blue belts are so cheap at this point in the game that blue is pretty much our, well we'll just start off with blue and if we have problems then we'll upgrade it to type belt colour. So I'll do that, upgrade all of this to blue. Again this red belt along here is going to be fine because we've only got a half belt, blue belt coming around here and a, a, a red belt is faster than half a blue belt so that'll, that, that upgrade will be fine. Uh, we don't actually need to upgrade that all the way to um, to, to, to green, that can stay as blue. So that'll add another 50% on the amount that's coming through here, which I think is probably going to be just about enough to keep all of these machines happy, because most of them are working at the moment. And then we'll have a few more solar panels coming through here. I don't know how much of a shortage we actually have of these. This this warehouse over here is pretty empty, so it looks like we do need to be making them a bit quicker. Um, this is what happens when, um, well, you, you saw earlier, Tristan had expanded his solar field over in uh, Njordbit to make to uh, help there. And don't forget that Mark had also made that massive, massive solar field out in Kalidas orbit which is huge. That was thousands and thousands of solar panels. So you can see why we get through rather a lot here and why we need to have a, a nice healthy supply of them being brought through. Uh, and these are all get, just, get, they're just getting taken straight up to space to then be upgraded further. But, you know, that's what we need to do. So, so, we, so we have been. Over on Talos, I had a train-related fail. There was a train down in this area here that ran out of fuel, and I'll talk about why that was in a second. But in order to fix it, I put in a few more uh, robo ports. Just sort of, I think I think I need one about here to link up to this area, and then a couple down here to link this one and this one down here. And then I was able to then call in for a, a blue chest here. I called in all, all, all of the uh, processed fuel that was available in the logistics network, and there was about 20 or 30 of it, and that was enough to get the train from here back up to um, here where it was able to properly refuel. And the reason it had had a problem is because I'd gone around removing some of the uh, the walls and the turrets and the uh, and the air filters and the belts around here that, had, that aren't needed anymore because we plague rocketed this planet. And so there didn't seem to be any point in having all these defences around here anymore because there's no biters and therefore the pollution doesn't matter so we might as well just rip it all up and hope it saves sort of one or two UPS maybe if we're really really lucky. Unfortunately I didn't think my cunning plan all the way through properly and as you can see I've ripped up all the pylons along here and so that meant that various bits of my factory lost power. Uh, I fixed all of it now of course, uh, now things are hunky dory, everything's working fine again. Oh, actually no this bit up here is cut off, I haven't fixed it properly, we need to have another, uh, another pylon down there like that. Um, so in theory, yeah, I tried to fix it all. I hadn't done a very good job of it, it turns out. Um, but initially, I'd cut off the power to this inserter over here. Probably, um, I'm not sure exactly which bit I'd removed, but anyway, I disconnected this inserter, and so it wasn't refueling the trains. So the trains were going round and round, and eventually ran out of fuel, and then I felt very, very silly and came in and fixed it. And if that wasn't bad enough, I also managed to cut off the power going down to the Naquium processing area as well. So for a little while, we didn't have any electricity down here, and this area stopped. So that's part of the reason we're short of Naquium, but to be honest, we're just not making it fast enough, so it's not the real reason. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I felt a bit silly when I realised what I'd done there. 
Mark has been doing cleanup on Norvis. I have, I have to be honest, I have no idea what he's cleaned up. But it's probably it's probably empty mines or random trains or random stations that aren't needed anymore. I think there might have been a couple of, of um, spare trains that Tristan had sort of stuck in a siding somewhere because he uh, didn't need those trains anymore. And um, Mark's picked them up and put them back into the chest and just sort of generally keeping, keeping the place tidy. He's also been going out and trying to pave most of the planet. So far he's done all... I think it was this area, this area around here was the newest part, I think. Uh, and this is what I was complaining about in the last video where I was saying, Maybe we should have been pumping all of that stone into the matter production, but oh well, never mind. There, was, there, there are plentiful supplies of resources. If we just, start, as I said yesterday, if we just start pulling all of this iron ore out and turning it into matter, I'm sure things will be absolutely fine. Mike has done a few little tweaks out on Kothar. He says he's uh, added some more modules to the sand production, which is probably this area here that doesn't seem to be getting any stone in at the moment, which is a bit of a concern. But there is plenty of sand coming in from this station at the moment, so that's a worry. Mike, I think you should have a look at this just to make sure it's not going to cause problems later. Um, but at the moment, it seems to be basically okay. But it seems that down here, I presume that this... Yeah, the... Uh, there's... It's 20,000 in here. We're, we're not unloading it, though, for some reason. So it's quite possible that this is set up correctly and deliberately, and it's not actually supposed to be outputting. Um, it says if there's greater than 100 in there. There is greater than 100 in there. Uh, oh, these are all turned round. Okay, well, I'm cautiously confident that he's probably done that deliberately and he, he knows that the sand supply that's coming from the uh, the train drop over here is sufficient and he doesn't need this one but yeah just just check that Mike just to be sure it isn't broken <laughs> I wouldn't want it to run out of iridium after you put all that effort into uh, make, making it actually r run better than any of the other uh, weird resources that we've got coming in at the moment Mike also upgraded his personal ship ever so slightly, so he's put in more fuel tanks and more engines, and he's also replaced all, uh, all of the sort of the mess of um, little uh, chests we had before with some full, with some proper big, nice, big, chunky warehouses, and done a little bit of rearranging as well, and and, uh, and so on. So his his ship is now going to be a bit faster than the rest of them, simply because it's got more engines. It also means it doesn't fit nicely into the uh, into the cutouts that we had, so he's obviously he's tweaked that as well, but that's fine. Uh, yeah, he's got a now now a slightly upgraded ship, which makes sense because he's been doing quite a bit of flying around and going to different planets. The rest of us, not so much. We've been sitting, either sitting around not doing very much, um, or go using the, the faster ships like the uh, like the Caladrian to go off to deep space places. Or the deep space exploration, That's that works reasonably well too. And I've also noticed that Mark has also upgraded his uh, his ship, so maybe Mike just copy and pasted it. Although I noticed they've got slightly different arrangements of doors on the side, so maybe it wasn't a straight copy paste from uh, one, to, one to the other. And also actually the um, the spaceship consoles in a different place. In fact, looking at them, there's, there's quite a lot of details that are a bit different, so I'm going to guess that it was a, a an inspired design, inspired by Mark's ship, rather than a, a copy-paste of it. Tristan has moved the emergency downstream station. So previously they were over here in this area that we now just have a little bit of untidiness in the um, in the scaffolding. Uh, and the problem with this was it meant that when if, whenever they went in or out of their stations, they caused slowdowns on the main trunk line through here. So ideally, we want trains to be able to come out of the elevator and then rocket along here at full speed uh, and until they come to their exit and then they'll drop off and then they'll do all their slowing down on one of the rib bits down here. When they're going along the spine, we want them to be going absolutely flat out. However, if you've got a station here and a train comes along here and then slows down to pull into this station, it means that anything following it has to slow down to, in, order to, um, in order to not crash into the back of it. And similarly, when they come out, any trains that are coming along here have to slow down to stop to let them out as well. So that was causing problems and congestion. So Tristan's taken all those stations from here and he's put them all over here, right down on the end. And this is a better place for them really as well, in a way, because most of the time when they're picking stuff up, it's going to be coming from the uh, from the disposal stations that are part of the spaceport along here. And now that I'm looking at this, I've also noticed another train jam here, because this train is preventing this one from coming in here, which is blocking the entire spine along here. So why are you just sat there? You're an automatic, you're trying to go to Norvis Down, but, oh, I see, you can't get out onto the spine because this train's in the way. So we, yeah, we need to have a signal in there, and then that'll allow this train to pull out. Uh, and we're presumably going to have that problem in every single one of these along here. Uh, well, every in, in quite a few of these, because, yeah, we're going to get this sort of problem with the trains trying to pull in. That's awkward and unfortunate. Yeah, we need to be a little bit more careful about this. Probably go along here and putting, putting, put signals in, in the tops of all these sort of, in the tops of all these triangles to make sure that doesn't happen anywhere else. So that's something to fix next time. 
Tristan has also upgraded the uh, the beacon by the labs over here. So we've gone from a wide area beacon to a wide area beacon too. And this has been shoved with, filled up with all of the best modules we can find. So we've got four speed nines and then a load of speed sixes. Uh, the speed nines are the ones we've been pulling out of the pyramids. That's why we have some, but not loads of them. And then similarly, li 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 li, the, the productivity nines have been being put into the uh, into the science labs up here. So we've got three in that one, two in that one. Presumably five is all we've found so far. So yeah, it's, um, it's a good start. It's going to massively improve the amount of science we can get done, both because things will go really, really quickly from this lab, at least when we haven't run out of science packs, and also the productivity buffs in here will get us a, that bit more of more science. So for every um, pack that goes in here, we get 2.69 packs worth of science done, which is quite a big buff, as you can imagine. And given how expensive science packs are, getting as much um, productivity bonus in here as we can is very, very worthwhile. And so, that brings, speaking of research, that brings us on to what we've been uh, researching in the last stream. So we've actually got a bit done this time, unlike, unlike in the previous streams. We did long range star mappings number 16, 17 and a bit of 18. So we've got 18 running up here. So we've done 16 and 17 and that's found us some more of those um, more of those glyphs out in uh, deep space with coordinates from as, as you've seen in the Informatron when I've been talking about the puzzle. We researched teleportation, which as it says unlocks other teleportation technology. It doesn't do anything on its own, but it's a gateway to other technologies. There's quite a few of those in, in the game really. Like uh, like when you, when you unlock something like the Naquin processor, you don't get anything particularly useful from it, but you can make the processors that then allow you to do other things. And there are, I think there are a few that are basically, you don't even get a thing like a processor. You just get the ability to do other researches. And so getting the uh, teleportation one has allowed us to then get the Arcalink storage. And this is what I was talking about before, the teleport chest, the one that costs loads of um, Arcospheres to make. And so I'm going to be, I, would, I do want to use one of these. I don't think they're actually that amazing because they're so expensive and so, so late game. However, I've never played with one before. And so I'm going to take the opportunity to do so. I talked quite a bit about how these worked earlier in the video, so I'm not going to go over it all again. But yes, it allows us to make the Arcolink storage, which is rather expensive. And so, yep, we're now, as I say, working on Long Range Star Mapping 18. That is all of the research we've done. They're getting they're getting expensive now, both in the, the number of packs they take. This, is, this one's a 5,000. These ones take um, 7,000 or so. This one takes 31,000, but no, but less few of the, fewer of the deep space ones. And also, it's getting more expensive in the ingredients they take. So as I was saying yesterday, the Long Range Star Mapping takes all four of the astro packs and then a lot of these other ones have been taking in um, a couple of the um, a couple of the uh, deep space science packs as well so they're expensive ones to run and that's why we've not been able to do an enormous amount of research because we've just been throwing so much resource into the science production so that's it for today. Come back on Monday when we should be carrying on with the stream. We should be going in and fixing some of the problems I've been looking at today, like that train jam and also the lack of beryllium and the lack of naquium and just many, many other things besides. There's lots of stuff to be looked at there. Uh, and then back on Wednesday as well, where I shall be, for the third week in a row, I shall be attempting to set up nuclear power in Satisfactory. Um, each week I get a bit closer, but still struggle a little bit. So uh, the first time it was because I got waylaid by giant spiders, which distracted me for quite a long time. Uh, last week it was just because there was so much stuff to build in order to get one of the other things that's required to keep the space elevator happy uh, that I didn't quite finish the uh, the nuclear power. Also, I need to run an incredibly long pipe as well. So we'll, um, yeah, that, that, that needs to be done too. So yeah, come along on Wednesday to, uh, to uh, cheer me on and uh, watch me uh, building, building stuff in, in a, with a third dimension as well. And then of course at the weekend, I'll be back with more of these catch up videos as usual. So as ever, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the videos and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.